what we've all been waiting for, another Homestead Happenings video. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm just feeding my sourdoughs. I've had these in the fridge for way too long. Oh, what's that, you ask? Why do I have two sourdoughs? That's a great question. Let me explain. Also, I have so much of this, I need to like give it to someone. I don't know. I need to feed these suckers. Do you have sourdough? This one has like gray up top, but apparently it's totally fine. It does produce some liquid on top. That's called hooch, I have learned. And the grayness is normal, even though this one doesn't have grayness. I don't know, I'm just gonna say that it's normal until you tell me otherwise. In which case, I will discard it. But I have a lot of sourdough starters because, let me show you my original one. I left it in this jar and I have kept it solely to show you. Um, it is a science experiment in my fridge. And actually yesterday I opened my fridge and I was like, something smells funky. I bet you it is this. Holy crap, there's just so much growth happening in here. None of it is good. So this was my original starter, okay? By the way, I have a lot planned for today, more than just sourdough. I do have sourdough recipes to share with you. Chicken update I'm gonna share with you. I have some like recipes, like homemade brownie mixes and pancake mixes. Maybe some pumpkin puree, homemade. Chicken stock, I really wanna make chicken stock. I got, oh my gosh, butter so much on my list. It might be, there might be another part to this. Obviously it's ongoing, but the first thing, I just wanna feed it and then later today I'll show you the growth. But here is my original sourdough. I left it in the fridge for, oh, sorry, way too long. And the biggest mistake I made is when you put it in the fridge, you're supposed to completely seal it. Yeah, I didn't know that, okay? It's like the rules, I don't know them all. You can't really see, but um, I didn't seal it. I just left it like that, you know? And so, yeah, that happened. And I was like, oh, that's not good. So, I actually have to burp this one because I think this is from my original starter. We'll see if it even burps. I don't know if it's dead or alive. It's been months. No, no burpage happening there. Someone might be able to revive it, but it's not gonna be me. I've got enough happening over here. When I found out I had killed my starter, I contacted one of my friends who has a very mature starter and I was like, hey, can I have some? And she said, yes, absolutely, I'll bring it over. But I didn't see her for, I don't know, several days. So then I found someone on Facebook and I, I didn't want to put pressure on her. I didn't want to be like, hey, where are you? Where can I pick it up? You know what I mean? And she was out of town too for a few days of that. So anyway, while I was waiting for a response from her, I went on Facebook Marketplace Tons of people are selling sourdough starter. The problem is like how far away are they and do your schedules match up to like pick it up? So I found someone who wasn't too far away. I picked it up one day, so that's why I have this one. And then my friend came by like the very next day, of course, and gave me, obviously it wasn't this much at once, but um, it's grown, so I don't really know what I'm gonna do with all of this. Maybe I should just start giving it away to everyone. I do have a friend who's asked for some, so maybe I'll put some aside for her today. I'm doing a substantial amount of starter because sometimes I make things that need a substantial amount because there's so many of us, I often double the recipes. This seems like a lot of flour. And then I'm just gonna add some water too, and that's literally all it takes. And I always use filtered water. You can use bottled water or whatever, but if we have a well, so I can't use our sink water, so people say. I feel like once I feed it, it'll be fine. If I use the sink water, I've done that a few times and it still grows and it's fine. But that's because there is like traces of chlorine and that could kill the starter. Also the type of flour you use is important. So this is bread flour, it doesn't have to be, but it does have to be unbleached and organic is best. I've used all purpose when I'm in a pinch and I'm out of whatever. I've heard a lot of people talk about how finicky sourdough is and then other people talk about how it survives everything. So I don't know, I'm somewhere in the middle. So I like it when the starter is more dry than wet and then once it starts like eating the flour then it gets more moist so that's pretty good i'm just gonna clean this out and i have been loving this jar i got it from ikea and i'm sure you can use everything the mason jar is really working out well too so if you're looking for something a little smaller if you don't need as much sourdough starter because i like to have a pretty good supply on hand because Whenever I make something, I always double it up, but there it is, looking good. Here we are with the chickens, oh. yes! They love me so much. <laughs> they don't, I'm not sure they like anyone. Oh. Yeah, oh. it's okay, see, I'm nice. The biggest change with the coop, it is so windy outside. I don't, last time I filmed out here, it's never windy unless I'm showing you the chickens. 
The biggest change out here, I'm out of breath, I just ran around trying to catch her. <laughs> yes, you love me, yes, just a little love. The biggest change is that we added a fence around here so they have a lot of space to run around and enjoy their life rather than being stuck in this. Before we were just letting them free range, I guess. Technically this is free range, but literally they were all around our yard, but they would only stick to like one specific spot in our yard and they started pooping all over Tarnation. So we were like, we need to fence this in. And if you saw my last vlog, you know that Alex is very interested in getting a goat. Our homestead might be growing soon. <laughs> I don't know about that, okay? I'm trying to talk him out of it. We'll see what happens there. Like, what are we gonna do with a goat? Do we like goat's milk? There are so many questions. But apparently, goats protect chickens. So as you can see, they're super plump now. We've had them for four or five months. I didn't take a lot of video of them as they were growing up, which is kind of sad, but I have some pictures from when they were teenagers and obviously babies. But now they're super plump. They're about to lay eggs. This is around the time of their age where they're about to lay eggs for us. So we're really excited for that moment in their womanhood. You know, people told us about chicken math and like, oh, once you get a couple, you're just gonna want more. And Alex and I are like, what are we gonna do with more? Like, I don't know. Maybe once they start producing eggs. Are you in distress? Do you just wanna be with your friends? I am wanting to put like bushes in here. You know, she would like me more, I think, if I had some worms. They do love worms. They love to poke around. They have ruined my grass. They've ruined my mulch when we were letting them like roam around. The fence is fairly new. It's only been a few days. And with the fence, let me put her down. So with the fence, I am wanting to paint it black. I don't know if I'll get to that today, but let me just show you. It's just a chain link fence and literally nothing exciting about it. But I do have a pretty large surface area to roam. It, there's literally no grass anymore. RIP my lawn. <laughs> I don't know where that ladder came from. I, I, it's from the contractors. They just left it. We don't know what the heck to do with it. So that, that's hanging out in here. But the price of a black fence is three times the price of a silver one, galvanized, I don't even know, aluminum. So I figured some Rust-Oleum black paint is only like 30 bucks, if that. So I'm going to grab myself some of that eventually and paint this black and I've seen people do that. And it kind of makes the fence look invisible. So I'm excited about that update. But for now, this is kind of a huge update too, where we have a fence and the chickens are kind of confined to one area rather than roaming around just pooping all over the place. While I'm out here before my camera dies, I'll show you the potato update. They are sprouting, which is super exciting. I threw potatoes in here. They weren't even like old or molded or anything. So however many months this has been and they've got some pretty nice like growth to them. So maybe in six more months, we'll have some potatoes to eat. The potatoes, still nothing. It's only been a few days since I filmed this, but here is what you actually came for. Just some chicken footage. The ladies, they're looking plump. They're looking like they're living in filth, but they're chickens, so <laughs> I think that's what they are used to. I am wanting to put some plants in here, some shrubbery, I was gonna say shrubbish, some rubbish, <laughs> it's what it's gonna end up looking like. But they love congregating around that palm tree in the back, so we trimmed it up for them. And I mean, obviously that's like where the bugs like to go to and that's what they're hunting for, the bugs. And so that's my plan in here, just to put some stuff. If I put, I don't know, whatever I put on the ground, they're probably going to ruin. Even the shrubs that I have out front that I've let them kind of roam around, they're kind of ruining those too, I'm not gonna lie. It could be the winter weather as well so you know I don't know but they definitely need some something back here something to that they can enjoy and so if you have any ideas let me know I'm gonna have to google it and see what's good back here but they also love worms they're always happy when they can get some worms in their bellies but they should be laying an egg soon so I'll update you whenever that happens because that's always super exciting. The last time we had chickens, the first egg that was laid was blue, so that was exciting. And it was on Mother's Day, so that made it double exciting, triple exciting. And it was quadruple exciting because Alex actually filmed it, which was wild and crazy that he just happened to be out there with the camera the time that she was plopping out an egg. So I doubt that will happen this time around. I mean... 
the chances of that happening are literally one in a million again. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Maybe we'll just put like a chicken cam on them at all times. Is that a little intrusive? I don't know. Maybe. But anyway, we're excited for that moment. Moving on to making some chicken stock. I splurged with these uh, organic items because I want to have the best of the best chicken stock. And I went to Sprouts and got the fancy carrots. They also had red carrots, which I've never seen in my entire life, but they are absolutely filthy. So they're needing a good wash. And to make the chicken stock, you just need a few fresh ingredients. Although I will say, cause I often wonder like, to get all the ingredients to make stock, although, side note, you can just save scraps from whenever you're cooking. So like the ends of an onion or whatever and the tips of the carrots, you can save that. But I don't know, it's my first time, so I figured I'd go all out. And I often wonder, how much does it cost you to make the chicken stock rather than just buying it, you know? So I'll tell you, I spent $11.31, but I did have to spend 10 cents on a grocery bag that Sprouts was trying to sell me because it was kind of last minute and I didn't have any of my grocery bags. Anyway, so I went to Costco. This is essentially free because we eat the chicken off of the rotisserie chicken and I just saved all of the bones and then like the wings and weird skin and stuff. So that's gonna add a lot of like collagen and a lot of good stuff to obviously our chicken broth. Otherwise it wouldn't be chicken broth. Here's the lineup. I obviously have the bones. I've got some thyme, carrots, celery, onion, and some parsley. I think I'm gonna throw some bay leaves in there too. I almost bought fresh, but I have some dried and I think that's good enough. And then I have this beautiful stock pot that I got from the thrift store. It's so nice. It weighs like 20 pounds. It's actually amazing. And I just needed a larger pot. And actually now that I'm looking, I'm like how is all of this stuff gonna fit in here? I don't know. How are we gonna make chicken broth, chicken stock? What's the difference? I don't think I put the greens of the carrots in the stock, but they sure do look cool, don't they? Doesn't look like I just grabbed them from my garden. Let's just pretend. Since I knew I was going to be making chicken stock, I did grab a couple of things to store it. I actually, okay, I bought a pressure canner because in my heart of hearts, my dream of dreams, eventually I'll start canning stuff. I don't even need all this celery, but I might as well wash it once, use it five times. But I got this pressure canner and eventually, I don't have any cans today to do this, but I wanna do like spaghetti sauce because I make homemade spaghetti sauce all the time. And I wanna do obviously chicken stock rather than filling up my freezer, I'd rather have it take up space in my pantry. And like, what if the power goes out and stuff? So I'd rather have all of that stuff safe in my pantry rather than having it in my freezer because that did happen the other day where like the freezer got left open and everything in it, thankfully it was like our super small freezer and nothing, it was like our ice cream freezer, nothing important was in there. But it was like, oh, you know, oh man, all this stuff went bad. Maybe like three carrots, that's good. And then I am gonna throw the onions in here to wash those too because I like to put the skins of the onions in the chicken broth. It just gives it that nice golden color. And then the other thing that I bought to store my soups with, I got this off Amazon, but I recently saw that they sell it at Costco too. I haven't been to Costco since I saw that they sell it there, so I don't even know if it's at my local Costco, but they are marketed as soup freezer trays and it comes with lids. So I think these are one cup little square cubes. And I thought that's perfect. You could freeze them like this, pop them out. I mean, they do come with a lid so you could freeze them straight in here. But if you have a lot, you can freeze them in this, pop them out, throw them in a bag, and then you're good to go whenever you need one. You know each little block is one cup. Yeah, it's eight ounces in each cube. And they do sell different size cubes. They have two cups, they've got half a cup, whatever you're interested in. But I thought those were really cool. So that's what I'm gonna use today. The last time I made stock was turkey stock for Thanksgiving. I swear, it was the best thing I've ever made. I used that stock to make the stuffing, to make the gravy, to make all kinds of stuff. So that's what got me hooked. I was like, homemade stock is literally unbeatable. Alex and I were just, you know, ravaging at the end of the night when I made the stock and we were eating like the chicken liver and stuff. It's never tasted so good. It was literally the best. So that's why I'm so excited about this one. It's gonna taste 100 times better than anything that you can buy in the store. I mean, 100 times, it's a little dramatic. So I'm gonna get this going. I actually 
broke the lid to this, which makes me want to cry, but I'm just using another lid interchangeably. If you're interested on the brand that I was able to thrift, Chefs Never Burn, and this is an 11 quart, it's 18.8 stainless steel. I was just so thrilled when I saw this at the thrift store. I was like, yes, because this kind of stuff is really expensive. So I always keep my eye out for it. I'm actually not even ready yet. I'm gonna give the veggies just a rough chop. So I've got three carrots, five stalks of celery, and I like to keep the fluffy fronds on here. Is that what they're called? I gotta dig into my cordon bleu knowledge. I, is this called pedio? Yeah, I don't know. Let's just call it celery leaves, but those add a ton of flavor. And then I'm just gonna cut I'm not sure if I'm gonna do one or two onions, we'll see. I'm gonna start off with one, but I'm just gonna quarter it, and that's pretty much it. Hardly any prep work involved in this, which is why it's so simple. Some people do this in their Instant Pot. I just grabbed this out of my freezer, it's just been sitting in there, so that's why it looks like a clumpy lump of nothing. Well, actually, this pot is massive. It's so big, I might even add some more veggies because this kind of looks like nothing in comparison. I do think the ratio, the onion ratio, is good, but I'm gonna cut up just some more. So I did two more carrots and then two more pretty large ribs of celery. That's pretty good. And then I'm gonna add the aromatics. I just have some parsley and then some thyme. Throw that in, maybe a little more, why not? And I have a couple of bay leaves I'm gonna throw in here. There's a ton of recipes, like in the new Joanna Gaines cookbook, she has a recipe for chicken stock. You can also find a ton online, but I don't really think you can mess this up, okay? And so to this, I'm going to start off by adding eight cups of water and I'll I'll probably do at least double. So here's 16 cups. I might even do more than that. And I will mention the chicken bones that I had was from two rotisserie chickens. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do more. Just enough to fill up the pot, I suppose. And I'm also going to add some salt and pepper to this too. Not a ton, because you can always add some later. I'm supposed to add, I think, like black peppercorn. I'm not at that level yet, so I'm just using what I have. Not too much, mix everything in, and then I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then let it simmer uh, for hours, just a few hours. You could do this on the Instant Pot, but I didn't buy this pot for no reason, you know? Plus, my Instant Pot is not this large. Bonus, I can feed all of these scraps, the veggie scraps, to my chickens. They're gonna be so happy. Is it weird that I'm gonna serve it in the chicken container from Costco. So the next thing I've been impatiently waiting to make and use is homemade butter. Remember that one time, the very first time I made homemade butter and I had no idea what the heck was happening? I think I was making Joanna Gaines French silk pie and then I got distracted by a baby. And I was like, wow, what the heck happened? Anyway, I made homemade butter before it was trendy, before it was a thing. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I didn't do it right. I stored it improperly and it went bad pretty quickly because of that. So now that I know more about it and the process is super simple, I've done it a couple of times since then, but I ended up buying this butter crock, which I saw like a few years ago from Jessica Braun. She's like the fanciest person I follow. She's incredible, but it's just a really simple butter crock. And what you do is you fill this up with water, just I don't know how much, there's not even a line in here, not much, just enough to cover. And then you put the butter in here, then you store it like so, and then you'll always have fresh butter that's room temperature, that's spreadable, you know, on the go. You have to replace the water in here every so often, but I thought, let's give this a whirl, let's give it a try. And the only ingredient that you need to make butter is heavy whipping cream and salt. And then the bonus to that is you get buttermilk alongside it. So you get butter and whatever's left over is buttermilk, I think. And you don't even have to salt it if you don't want to, but I love that salty life. I'm not sure if you need the whisk attachment or if it's frowned upon. I have both. I'm gonna try the paddle attachment. And all you do is just pour in the heavy whipping cream in a stand mixer. You could do this by hand or go old school and get a butter churner, which I literally have been looking at on Facebook Marketplace. People are wanting to sell those things for a pretty penny, so I didn't go for it. Should I go big and do two at once? I might as well. It might get a little messy, but I do have a cover. I'm gonna see if I can find it real quick. When I say pretty penny, I mean literally $300. I'm like, to make butter? Come on. It's more expensive than my KitchenAid. <laughs> literally let this go. 
and it'll turn into butter. It's pretty cool. Aha, here it is. Only took some digging to find it, but this doohickey goes around here, and I think it just prevents a lot of sloshing around. I also ended up getting this sourdough basket kit off of Amazon. I was trying to thrift some sourdough baskets, but I don't know, it wasn't working out. And so the kit came with actually a lot. Did it come with this? I don't even know. I don't know why it would. Maybe to clean out the sourdough like holder. Came with a Dutch dough whisk, which I thought was pretty cute. And then some patterns to make your sourdough with. I used this one, turned out really well, and then I cut my finger trying to make a rose and it came out looking like donkey. Oh wait, maybe I cut my finger doing this one. I don't know, I made these two and they both, it just didn't work out for me, but this one was pretty good, but it does come with like razor blades, which is how I got, I was pressing too hard. I have a lot of pressure when I write, so lesson learned there. Not sure what this is, but it came with that. And then also like a couple bench scrapers and stuff. So I can appreciate all the accessories, but really all I needed were the baskets. It is kind of spewing out of the sides and a little bit on the claw, but honestly, I've seen worse. Oh, well, I guess this is worse. I should probably check on the inside. It's, it's been a little bit. What's happening in there? It's still working. What's happening down here? How, how is this coming out? Oh, it's just spewing. Okay, so do just one container at a time. That's my suggestion to you. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's fine. I think it's just a little clean up. I've still seen worse, not gonna lie. I feel silly about complaining about this, but I'm like, man, it's been a while, like 10 minutes. You can tell that it is getting creamier but I am going to replace the pedal attachment with the whisk attachment. I just know Wolfgang isn't going to sleep forever, you know what I mean? So I gotta get this show on the road. Also, back in the day, yeah, people did this by hand. It probably took all day, but like what else was there to do, you know? <laughs> Looking creamy and dreamy in there. All right, it's finally coming together. This is like whipping cream. If you wanted some for your strawberries. But we're gonna go past this point. I'll give you a full view. Nice and thick. There are stiff peaks happening. And that is whipped cream. And then it's gonna start to separate. So it's working <laughs> real hard. Okay, I either broke my KitchenAid or like what's happening? It sounds like the motor's going out. Now you can see it's sloshing. All right, it's sloshing everywhere. I'm losing all my buttermilk. Holy crap. Well, I guess that is what happens when uh, you don't really know what you're doing. Okay, when you put way too much cream in there. But here is the golden egg. This is the butter. Oh, so soft and creamy. This is great but we're not done yet. And then I can save all of that buttermilk uh, if I find a container for it. And then I'm gonna have to clean up all this mess. You wanna come help? Okay. Well, my cabinets needed a good wipe down anyway, so it all worked out. But I was sitting here thinking as I was cleaning, the heavy whipping cream, the best price to, that I have found it is at Costco. I, it's less than $3 for like that huge quart because you know, I do hear people when they're like, well, I can just literally buy butter for less than it cost to get heavy whipping cream, look around, wait for sales. And Target I have found has a pretty reasonable price on it too. And then of course, just doing it homemade, you know what's going into it and all that good stuff. All right, good enough for now. So the next step is rinsing it. And actually my chicken stock just came to a boil. So this is where I'm just gonna take all of the butter. Oh my gosh, this is so satisfying. It's like Play-Doh for adults. Look how, oh my gosh, this, is the best thing I've ever made. <laughs> it really makes me want to get a butter turner just to sit outside, watch the kids play and run around while I'm churning my butter. Gossip about the neighbors. Okay, so now you have to rinse your butter just to get all of that excess buttermilk off of it to keep it fresh longer. So the buttermilk has casein in it and it'll just make it go rancid. So really give it a nice, thorough wash. I'm kind of squeezing the butter so I can get it all rinsed out. Just 
Just making a little butter man. I just found out that I am out of wax paper. So, look how cute he is. <laughs> Don't eat me. And that's what I had planned on storing the butter in. Obviously, I'm gonna put some in this butter dish here. In the crock. Country crock. Does anyone eat that? We used to have those tubs. You guys know we would save the tubs for leftovers. <laughs> so apparently water in this dish and then that's all you have to do to store it. Seems pretty awesome. Oh crap, I didn't add salt. Okay. So to add the salt, I'm just gonna flatten it out and then just sprinkle in some salt <laughs> and then fold it in. And now you have salted butter. So simple, no skill involved at all. So since I don't have wax paper, I'm just going to throw it in a Tupperware container but I do see all those people on Instagram with their wooden paddles and stuff, and maybe that'll be me down the road, but for now, I'm just gonna use what I have, and that's good enough. I got so excited about the butter, I almost forgot about the buttermilk. I'm gonna wipe this down, and then I'll try to find a container for it. Yes, I just got this jar. I just washed it. This sticker, I got this from the thrift store. I always have my eyes peeled for a nice jar from the thrift store. Should probably get a funnel for this, but is that necessary? Like, do I need to clean a funnel? I think we're, oh, I should probably sift it. What's it called, sift it? Like strain it? Is that necessary? I don't know. I'm gonna use this probably tomorrow to make some pancakes, so the extra butter chunks, that just adds flavor. Well, this was way larger than I needed it to be, but that's okay. Buttermilk, done, cool. The aromatics in here are crazy. I had to walk out of the room. And then when I came back into it, the like waft of chicken stock. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. Like when you're in the room while it's brewing, it's like you can't smell your own BO, you know? Anyway, that's amazing. The next thing I'm gonna do, I bought another gadget. <laughs> it's like, is homesteading saving me any money? No. But it will be preservative free. This is a cheese grater. What's funny about this is that I debated getting this literally for years. And then I saw the one that you can stick on your counter, you know, and that one's pretty pricey too, 25, $30 or whatever. So I've had my eye out on it at the um, thrift store. Couldn't find them, never showed up, whatever. I'm like surely if I wait long enough, something always comes through. Like everyone's buying one, eventually they'll turn up. And sure enough, about two weeks after I ordered this little beauty, saw one at the thrift store for five bucks. I was like, oh man. I almost got it just to like give it to a friend or something, but I didn't. I'm sure whoever found it was excited about it. it so this is the cheese grater that is the attachment to the KitchenAid. It's easy to clean, it's small, so storage is great. It's whatever. We've been using it a lot. And you know, I've been wanting to do it for a long time. They say like, don't buy pre-shredded cheese. It's got all this crap on it. It's got cornstarch, it's got preservatives, all this stuff, right? And we know it, but it's convenient. So we get it. Even though it is way cheaper to buy blocks of cheese and shred it yourself, sometimes you just, you can only do what you can do. And so today, what I can do is shred my own dang cheese with this thing that I spent a lot, like how much money am I saving? Really, but I'm spending money on this. <laughs> I will say, over time, it will save me money. I roll my eyes, who the heck knows? But the kids are enjoying this, I'm enjoying it, and my kids are eating so much dang cheese. I mean, they always eat a lot of cheese. The pro of this is that the Parmesan cheese that my kids gobble up, I'm not, I'm no longer buying the powdered kind, which is like, I should have never in the first place, but it's like their favorite, so I always do. So I've been buying the block of Parmesan from Costco, and I feel like that does save me a lot of money. I'll show you what it looks like. So the kids obviously have been enjoying this too, but you just shove the block in. The one con to this is that whenever I take the attachment out, which it comes with uh, like three of those different size shredders, there's always some cheese, residual cheese down here. And I just, I mean, is it a con or is it a snack? I don't know. Definitely a pro now that I think about it, right? So this is the joy of it. You just shove the cheese in there and it shreds it all up. It comes with three different attachments. So for the Parmesan, I put the like smaller 
pieces, smaller fragments of cheese. I don't shredder, I guess is what you want to call it. I maybe should have done my homework on this, but that's okay. It comes with three different attachments and I'm using two of them. I've never used the third because that's when you get like the, the shavings. I guess if I ever need that, I have the opportunity to make it. But otherwise, we've been loving eating cheese like this and it does taste better. I'll say that. By the way, I've been saving the rind in my freezer because supposedly it's good for soups and stocks and stuff, but I've yet to use them. Next thing I'm gonna whip together are better than Ghirardelli. I don't even think she made that claim. I'm just hoping that they are similar or somewhat better than Ghirardelli brownies. Um, I'm gonna make a dry brownie mix to just have on hand is it more affordable than buying Ghirardelli? I don't know, the Costco prices are really hard to beat. And I don't know what I was thinking or how much I was going to make, but I literally bought 10 of these. Maybe more than 10, at least 10. Also, two containers of baking powder. <laughs> I was like, I might use a whole container of baking powder and then some baking soda. But cocoa powder, I was checking prices on Amazon, I was checking prices at, well, I didn't go to Costco, but I never see cocoa powder at Costco. And then I was going to Target to do a, a pickup order anyway, so I thought, let me Google how much it is at Target. The Nestle kind, or whatever kind that they sell, the name brand, is just as affordable as buying it in bulk, five pounds on Amazon. But did you know that Target sells it for Target brand, Good & Gather? This was less than $3. This is breaking my mind. I couldn't believe it, so I found this container at Home Goods. So annoying. I'm gonna fill this puppy up with some brownie mix. Really simple ingredients. I'm sure you have all of them in your pantry. I just went above and beyond. Oh, and a secret ingredient I'm adding. I know Garden Special is the espresso powder. I'm really excited about this, just a little bit. It really enhances that chocolate flavor. So I'm gonna start off by drying my measuring cup. I've been washing as I'm going and proud to announce, I think my sinks are clear. <laughs> I might double this recipe because I think I can fit a lot in here. So I'm gonna do, well, let me just see how much fits. Okay, so three cups of flour. Oh gosh, I follow someone on Instagram who does that. She makes it look so good. Okay. Here's the kicker, six cups of sugar. Listen, we're making brownies, it's a dessert. There's going to be sugar. No, you can't cut it, you can't skimp on the sugar. Was that two or three? Crap. Four, and then two cups of cocoa powder. I maybe should have gotten my big Bertha bowl for this. Oh, okay, perfect, it's one whole container. It only calls for two teaspoons of baking powder, which seems a little off. That seems like how much you add to like one portion of brown. I'm gonna do three. No baking soda, but it does call for two teaspoons of salt. And then I'm probably going to add about a tablespoon of the espresso powder in here. And then I'm just gonna mix it up. And I feel like this is really begging for some chocolate chips, right? I feel like the Ghirardelli mix has those hunk of chunk of chocolate chips in there. So I might add those. Really give it a good mix. Once everything is nice and incorporated, I'm just going to do my best, pour it all in here. I guess I could have made it in here and then just put the lid on and shook it up. Well, I couldn't have doubled it, but it could use some more. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add some chocolate chips in here, just a couple of cups, maybe a little more. Never hurt anybody. Unless you have diabetes. <laughs> all right, I'm going to just mix the chocolate chips in. I feel like I should make some of these brownies and then let you know how they actually taste. But to, obviously you're not eating six cups of sugar at a time. You only use, when you prepare this, two and a quarter cup of mix, half a cup of melted butter or oil, and then one to two eggs depending on how, if you like it fudgy or cakey, and then a little bit of vanilla. And that's it. Excited about making this for Brownie Friday. Just so you know, the batter, salmonella, I dare you, is very thick, but it also tastes amazing. I went back and double checked the instructions. That's all you add, no water, no milk, whatever. These were amazing. I don't know if I got it on film, but I had to test the batter because salmonella, first of all, I dare you. Second of all, Ghirardelli has the best brownie batter. It almost tastes better than the brownies themselves. But we had family movie night this night, and so obviously we had to make brownies because 
I mean, second of all, it was Friday. Friday. It's Brownie Friday. You have to sing it like that. It's the law. Anyway, these were great. Even though they don't look great, we normally use this tray with a double batch. I'll give you an update on the chicken stock. I'm just opening it up and giving it a stir. Things are really breaking apart in here, mostly the onion, and that's fine. I tried to keep the root on, but it's bound to happen. Like this one, I quartered them so they would kind of stay together. Not that it really matters because everything's going to get strained out of here anyway. But the flavor in here, I haven't even tasted it yet. Should I give it a taste test? Okay, the good old chef's taste test. Barely been simmering, maybe an hour. Oh, and already the flavor is absolutely fantastic, but I'm going to let this go for at least four hours, and then I will, like, stream everything. Stream? What am I, what's that word? Sift? Strain. Strain everything. Okay, that makes some more sense. Here it is just a couple hours later. I think it's ready to be strained. It smells really good. While I was straining it and like putting it in the cubes and stuff, I had the pot out with the rest and Alex was like, this is the best soup you've ever made. <laughs> I was like, it's chicken broth or stock, whatever the heck. But once I strained it out, I just poured it into the cubes and threw it in my freezer. I left the cubes in the freezer overnight. By the way, this was delicious. I mean, how can it not be, right? All those veggies, all the aromatics, the herbs, and then obviously the chicken with all the collagen and so many great things happening. And I don't know why I haven't done this sooner. You know why? I tried in my head to do the math. Like how many cubes am I going to get? Is it worth it doing this? Because I can get cartons from Publix, BOGO all the time, or like the can of better than bouillon. But it's homemade and it's all that good stuff. Learning how to make and preserve your own food. I mean, there are benefits to all of it, right? So this is, these are the cubes. And I just threw this in the freezer. I left it overnight, so it got a really good harden on them. But I ended up getting four solid blocks. So four, eight, 12, 16 of them. And I did have a little bit left over to just throw in whatever dinner I made that night. And it just added so much flavor. Hey, I added these clips in. I just did this yesterday because it took all night for the first cubes to freeze. And then I'm putting in the second bag, but I essentially just wanna show you how easily they pop out of here. Um, I did have a little trouble with the second, well, I don't know if it was trouble or it was just because my fingers were freezing so, and my fingers were hurting, okay? I needed to pull some landscaping duty but I did run it under hot water and that just helps it ease up a little bit from the silicone. But it was super simple. Just fill, freeze, and pop out and then keep in your freezer. <laughs> but I liked it. Okay, it's been a while, maybe even a little bit too long because it is starting to fall, but it rose a ton and uh, I gotta make something with it. You can definitely tell that it fell because the top of the streaks, that's how much it rose which is insane. It like really doubles in size and it was already starting to fall and perfect time to, you know, throw it in a recipe that I was making. This particular day, I think I was making sourdough bread, but I'm going to pedal back to the past, blast from the past. What's that other movie called? Something future. It's like the one, oh my gosh, it's my dad's favorite movie. It's like the only movie he ever watches. Future. It's with that dude on the board. Doc Brown, something to the, bla no, it's not blasted, hold on. It is back to the future, okay, and I am making pancakes, I want to say. I started this the night before, as you can see, Wentworth was walking behind me in his, after his shower towel, I think, anyway, maybe his nightgown, is that a blanket? I see, I don't even know. Anyway, it is the night before, and so I started out, let me grab the whole recipe. Okay, so... First of all, there are 120 recipes <laughs> on sourdough anything, right? So this one is a night before. So I wanted something that I could start the night before and then just make in the morning. It seems to be the easiest way for me to do it. And it's a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of sugar, salt. Oh gosh, Hold, just hold the phone, hold the phone. I'm not sure if this is the recipe that I used, but I've been looking all over for it. I feel like the morning of I added some stuff, but essentially this recipe says you just add everything, the one and a half cups flour, two tablespoons sugar, 
half a teaspoon of sea salt, two teaspoons baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, and then the wet ingredients are one cup of sourdough, discard or active, two large eggs, one cup of milk, three tablespoons of, you know, butter or oil. Yeah, so I feel like this is the morning of, and I added the baking soda and baking powder. But I'm looking up different recipes now, and apparently that is just unnecessary. The overnight instructions just say to add everything together and mix it. Um... Okay, so why couldn't I have made these in the morning? Don't ask me, you guys. Don't ask me any questions. I have no answers for you. It depends on who you talk to. You got to let it ferment. You don't have to let it ferment. What is the difference? (laughs) Uh, You know what? Regardless, we had some pretty delicious pancakes. He said, hot, hot. Oh, man, this griddle is one of my favorites. It is fantastic. And I almost forgot to add chocolate chips to some of the pancakes. I like them sans chocolate chip. But my kids, some of them, really enjoy the chocolate chip. They were a little flat. They didn't, you know, rise. I didn't have buttermilk, so I did use almond milk. It's like, whatever. Do what you can. Use what you have. That's always my mantra. And, I mean, right now... I. I made pancakes this morning, I'll have you know, and they were extra fluffy and I did use my homemade buttermilk. I'm just saying, but for these, you know, I just used what I had on on hand and honestly, they were some of the best pancakes I've ever had. Not even going to lie. They weren't from a box and they were sourdough. They were delicious. Maybe it was the amount of butter that I used. I don't know, but I'm moving on. New day. I had a new recipe and this was for sourdough muffins, I think. Maybe blueberry, but I added chocolate chip. It's like you can change anything, right? So, of course, as with any good sourdough recipe, it calls for sourdough discard or starter. So I think this was like an active starter. I'm going to have to look into what the difference is between using a discard and an active and bubbly. Like, is it, I assume it's better to use an active bubbly. You're going to get, you know what? I should probably Google that right now. Listen here, hear ye, hear ye. However, they are in different phases. Active starter has been fed flour and water within the last 12 hours or so and is growing until it hits its peak. Once it begins to fall, it's considered discard. Well, we knew that fact. What we want to know is what the difference is in using it in a recipe. So I will leave this recipe down in the description box. Well, you can just Google any recipe, honestly. It wasn't like life-changing or anything but apparently the benefits of using sourdough discard is obviously getting that sourdough flavor and then moisture adding moisture to the recipe oh it's a tenderizer it adds fermentation fermentation adding sourdough to baked goods also imparts the magic of fermentation as dough or batter ferments sourdough acts like a second stomach Ooh, so nice. That's why we love it so much. That's why it's easier for us to digest. Fermentation also unlocks nutrients in wheat that our bodies cannot normally digest, which is why a lot of people can tolerate sourdough, but not not necessarily like breads from the grocery store or yeasty breads. Oh, am I on to another recipe? Hold the phone. Yes, I am. I am on to my favorite sourdough bread recipe and I'll link this one down below too and it is absolutely fantastic. It's so simple though and I feel like all of the sourdough bread recipes are very similar. I mean literally you need bread, not bread, (laughs) you need flour, sourdough discard, water, and salt. That's it and they're all pretty similar in terms of units of measurement and in terms of like the weight that you need or how much you need. So I feel like whatever you find online, Farmhouse on Boone is obviously an encyclopedia when it comes to sourdough recipes. Lisa is fantastic when it comes to that. She's like the queen of homesteading. I'm just saying. And she has a ton of kids. Oh my gosh. How does she do it? I don't even know. I aim to be her. So this it, this is why people don't really love to do sourdough is because it's t- kind of a time consuming process. It's a labor of love, but it is all worth it in the end. Whenever I have fresh bread, people are always like, oh my gosh, fresh bread. Yes. And the fact that I made a couple of loaves this morning and I had fresh butter to go along with it. 
absolutely superb Julia Child who I'm just saying so I'm just folding it over and I do that four times and then I let well for I fold it over four times but I do the process also four times I have wet hands to ensure that the dough doesn't really stick to my hands so it's really easy but I just fold it over pivot the bowl a quarter fold it over pivot the bowl and you can see as the process as I go through it the dough becomes more and more elastic and moisturized and all that good stuff. So as it feeds onto itself, I let it rest for about six to eight hours, or you can throw it in the fridge overnight or whatever, and it will double in size. And then I, I think this is two loaves, so I cut it in half. Oh, what am I making? <laughs> I thought that this is something else. These are the muffins again. You guys, I need help, apparently. Apparently. So this is... Whatever I did with the muffins first, I threw it in the fridge overnight. This is the morning of when I'm actually making the muffins and I'm finishing the process. So I'm adding the eggs, I'm adding the brown sugar, I'm adding the butter and more sugar and vanilla and baking soda and baking pat. I'm at literally everything. <laughs> what did I add the night before in here? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Okay, were these muffins great? I feel like I already told you they weren't life-changing they weren't even the best muffin. I don't even think I'd use the recipe again, but just know that everything that you make, cookies, I wanna do the cookies soon. You can add the sourdough to any recipe. And I think that's what I'm gonna do from now on, just add some sourdough. If I'm making a recipe, if I'm making cookies or whatever, just plop it in. What's it gonna hurt? I don't think anything. It's just gonna add everything I mentioned before. Fermentation, the flavor, all the good stuff. So anyway, that's that. And hopefully I end up going back to the bread because the bread, I mean, there's a reason why there's a saying it's the bread and butter. Everyone just, who doesn't love fresh bread? Everyone should have their hand up. Wait, who doesn't love? No, put your hand down. Okay. Put it down. Everyone loves fre fresh bread and there it is. Here we go. I must have put it in the fridge overnight to double. And now I'm putting the loaves together. I think I made two loaves. No, I'm just, this is one singular loaf. Okay. It's a little beauty in here. You roll it together to try to encourage all those bubbles to join on the inside. Oh, and here is my bread basket in the flesh. I'm using it. Super exciting. And I used it today too. So I made two loaves this morning because I've learned my lesson. If you're going to make one, you might as well make two because it is a labor of love. You can throw it in the freezer if you're not going to eat it right away. Our family though, we literally eat one while the other one is cooling, even though they're both piping hot at the same time. We just know like one loaf goes like that. And then the second loaf you can use for sandwiches or whatever. I will say it's kind of hard to cut, but not, not, not like cut as in when I'm making the design like that or scoring it, I should say, cause that's the proper term. I'm horrible at scoring it. Ooh, a little exfoliation there. It's Alex's favorite actually. But when you're cutting the bread, when it's complete, like I have a really sharp bread knife and I still have trouble cutting it. So tell me if there's a secret behind that. Is there something I'm missing? But here, oh my gosh, can we get a round of applause for this little beauty? She's beauty and she's grace. She's Miss United States. The sourdough, come on. Man, that's so good. And it's just like, I made that. That I have created. Fire! Name that movie. Anyway, it's so good. It makes me feel so good. When I eat it, mm, my tummy is like, thank you. It's delicious. There's really not many things better in life than fresh bread and butter, right? I mean, now that I say it out loud, I'm thinking of a few, but this is what I'm talking about. Like, it's not easy to cut. I see people do it all the time. Like even that looked easy, but I was probably sawing for a minute, you know, <laughs> you know, at the top. I see people do this with the bread too, like squeezing it. This doesn't have as many bubbles as other ones that I've made. But anyway, I see people do that. I'm like, why are they squeezing it? I don't know. It is delicious. I will say that. Make it. It seems intimidating, but I promise you it's not. It's just a couple steps to follow and you're going to have fresh bread in your belly before you know. Okay, that's it. I hope you guys had a good time hanging out at my homestead with me today. I actually have a whole list of things on my like to do for the homestead. I got to paint the fence, pancake mix, 
a garlic confit, homemade pickles, my garden, obviously, but most importantly, the pumpkins that have been sitting on my stoop since fall. Uh, if they're not completely moldy inside, the outside look perfect, pristine. So that's my next thing that I'm going to do for homesteading. Oh, and canning, that's a big one. I wanna can, obviously, the pumpkin, and then can spaghetti sauce. I'm gonna can it all, maybe. I need to buy some cans first, but I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day, and I'll see you next time, bye.